Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, December 21st, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan took a look at a malicious PowerPoint file today, and according to Jan, he has seen a steep increase in PowerPoint being used to distribute malware. Of course, PowerPoint being a Microsoft Office type document, it is able to hold the same macros as any other office document. This particular document did bring ancient Tesla and it arrived as a PPAM file. PPAM stands for PowerPoint add-ins with macros and well the last part here macros is really sort of what's important. Jan has a good walkthrough of this particular malicious file and how it works, nice diagram in the different stages, how components are loaded. He also points out that a good part of this particular malware is actually just based on open source code. And while some of it is sort of exploit code like a UAC bypass, there's also some more generic code like, for example, how to deal with zip files that's just borrowed from GitHub. And we got updates from VMware, actually two updates on consecutive days for Workspace ONE and the critical one with a CVSS score of 9.1 is a server-side request forgery vulnerability that would allow an attacker access to sensitive information without having to authenticate. VMware also published a pretty extensive list of products that are vulnerable to log4j. Some of them start having some patches available now. So uh, keep an eye on that. I'll add a link in the show notes to the advisory overview page. So that way you have links uh, to all the advisories, the Workspace ONE advisories, as well as the log4j advisory. There's also an interesting flaw in VMware Verify, the two-factor authentication product from VMware. A malicious actor who has the username and password could actually gain access to the second factor, essentially turning the two-factor authentication into one factor. And there has been over the years a lot of talks about weaknesses in building automation systems and of course plenty of examples of them being exposed to the internet but not really a lot of actual well-documented cases of uh, these attacks being actually used against organization. Well, Lemia Security has an interesting case now where they actually uh, ran an instant response for a company whose building management system was compromised. What actually was particular sort of interesting here is that a security feature in this uh, KNX, uh, I guess short Knox or whatever you pronounce it, technology uh, was used against the victim. The technology here is uh, BCU keys. Uh, these keys can use to lock the configuration of a system unless someone knows what the key is. The attacker here apparently set a BCU key and then locked the victim out of these systems. And well, in order to actually make these BCU keys work, there is no physical reset, even if you do have access to the device. After all, they are often used for locks and the like when an attacker may have some physical access to the device and that's why they can't be reset. So the victim here really was faced with the choice uh, to literally replace their entire building management hardware. Luckily, it was possible to recover the key from memory. The key itself is only four bytes, but that's still four billion combinations and brute forcing didn't work uh, because the slow response time of the affected devices. And well, just a quick log4j update, nothing really sort of fundamentally new or different. We are still at log4j version 2.17 for Java 8. 
there has been some talk about these Mirai variants. I also tweeted about one that sort of looked like a Mirai attack against one of our honeypots. Apparently, these attacks may not work against vulnerable devices. Also, the Belgium Defense Department uh, did uh, publish a news report about an attack against the network. Didn't really say if it was successful or uh, what exactly happened, but they did shut down part of the network as a result. So let's hope that Log4j will stay at least static throughout the holidays. As far as this podcast is concerned, I'll uh, do another podcast on Wednesday and Thursday this week, and then probably also four podcasts next week. I'll try to keep them a little bit shorter, just realizing that it's holidays and well, uh, you shouldn't really be listening to podcasts, but I also know that some of you are probably still working and having to deal with issues like uh, Log4j or VMware updates and the like. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.